Hello guys and gals and welcome. So uh, today we're going to be looking at an axe and uh, it is called Razor's Edge. And uh, what am I doing on a sorceress? We need to bring this over to a character who is a melee character. Oftentimes I will forget to, to bring these items over to a character who can actually get some use out of them. And, uh, and that is uh, just my bad. So we're going to bring this over to a Bombardadon. And uh, my little Bombardadon over here, <laughs> he got his... Uh, his points reset. Uh, give me just a second. All right, so here we are on my barbarian, and uh, and we have two versions of this axe. We have the ethereal and the non-ethereal version. Um, now this particular item is uh, an elite item, so it cannot be upgraded. Um, it is already a one-handed weapon. Now one of the downsides of this particular type of weapon, uh, which I want to talk about before we even get into the item itself, is that the tomahawk, uh, which is a base item an elite base item has an extremely low range um it has a range of basically the lowest range in the entire game i'm not even going to say the number because it's literally the lowest um which means that you need to be very very close to monsters when you're attacking them and this can be an issue uh for very specific characters uh, you know like for instance if you are a zeal paladin or a fury barbarian um, you're gonna have to get in there very very close to the target to be able to hit them this is the reason why a lot of people will choose the Berserker's Axe for a lot of their uh, rune words. And it's not because the Berserker's Axe is the best axe in the world as far as damage is concerned. Um, it actually has to do with the fact that the Berserker's Axe is actually the highest range axe. So it actually has the, uh, the longest range for a one-handed weapon. So whereas the Tomahawk is literally the lowest range one-handed weapon, the, uh, the Berserker's Axe is the highest. But that's, let's not count this axe out just simply because the range is bad. Um, a lot of the issues with low-range weapons actually did get fixed with Diablo II Resurrected. Um, in Diablo II Classic Edition, there was a lot of issues with low-range weapons um, and desyncing. And uh, if you had extremely low-range weapons, it could cause uh, many issues with desyncs and you'd end up dying because you couldn't attack monsters that were supposedly right next to you. But in Diablo 2 Resurrected, that problem has mostly been fixed. So let's go over this weapon uh, step by step, shall we? So right off the bat, we have uh, a damage of 107 to 188, uh, which is uh, not bad. We also have a uh, dexterity requirement of 67 and a strength requirement of 125, which is also not bad. Uh, level 67 requirement, which is relatively low for an elite item. And uh, I feel like you'll be able to use this pretty quickly. Um, there are obviously some other options that you could be using, but maybe this is the one that you found, and uh, and you this is this is what you've got to use. Uh, we have a, a very fast attack speed because the tomahawks do tend to be extremely fast weapons. Um, they also have 40% increased attack speed on this particular item, which is making it even faster. So we are looking at an extremely quick weapon. Uh, we have 225% enhanced damage, which does vary between 175 to 225%, so a pretty big variable there on the ED. Uh, we also have a negative 33% to target's defense, which is very, very nice. Um, negative 33% to target's defense is going to make it a lot easier for you to hit targets because their defense is going to be lower, and when your attack rating goes to check and see if you can hit, well, it's going to be a lot easier for you. Uh, we have 50% chance of Deadly Strike, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so Deadly Strike is the chance to do double damage, and it does actually stack with other effects like Critical Strike, but in, not in the exact way. So, you know, if you had 30% uh, Critical and 50% Deadly, um, it would not stack immediately to 80. What it does is it stacks one on top of the other. So it will roll Critical Strike first, and if Critical Strike fails, it will roll Deadly Strike, and if Deadly Strike fails, then you get nothing. Um, but you will get two attempts, which is very nice. Uh, we get 50% chance of open wounds, which is absolutely amazing. Um, open wounds is a 8 second bleed, which is based on the character's level for damage. So uh, if you're a very low level, it does next to nothing. And if you're a very high level, it does a lot. Um, and 50% uh, chance is, means it's going to be up a lot, especially with the speed of this weapon. Now you can find this in its ethereal form. Um, and the ethereal form has the 159 to 282 damage, which is a lot higher. Um, and this strength and the dex, of course, are reduced by 10 each. Uh, not 10%, just 10. 
Now, if you were to use the Razor's Edge Tomahawk in its ethereal form, you would have to put a Zodru in it, uh, which means... Oh, uh, that's completely not the Zod rune. Where's my Zod rune? No! There's my Zod rune. Dagnabbit. Now it's Taled. <laughs> the worst... I could have sworn I put the Zod rune here. Ugh. You know what that blooper's saying in the video? I don't even care. My Taled Razor's Edge Tomahawk. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's just pretend it's Zodded. How about that? Um, so, so, so if we Zod it, um, it would become indestructible, as the Zod rune says, and um, and we would be able to use it in its uh, Zodded form. Is it worth a Zod rune? I don't particularly know if it's worth a Zod rune. 282 damage at level 67 is pretty high, and the Deadly Strike combined with the Open Runes is pretty powerful. Um, are there better weapons that you could be using? Yeah, maybe. Um, but... You know, it, there are a lot of different ways to play Diablo. Um, perhaps you're playing a solo self-found build. Um, this is a very powerful weapon. And if you found this in a solo self-found build, you'd probably be using it for quite some time until you found something better. And there's no guarantee that you're ever going to find something better than this particular weapon uh, because it is an extremely powerful weapon. Um, if I were to compare this versus other weapons of, of uh, equivalent strength, um, you know, I would be looking at things like Crushing Blow, uh, which this item is missing, uh, which you could theoretically, if you wanted to, you could throw in a, uh, a crushing blow rune, like for instance, a burr rune, and then you would end up with 20% crushing blow on top of 50% deadly strike and uh, chance of open wounds. So, you know, not exactly terrible. And as you can see here, I have two of them at the moment. And when you look at them, they're actually very cool looking weapons. They have like this blue sort of sheen to them, um, you know, kind of like almost like a, a frost even though there's actually no frost damage on these. Um, they are actually purely physical-based weapons, so do keep that in mind as you look at these items. There's no elemental damage on them. Um, so if you are using these specifically for a character who is, uh, who is you know, only physical damage, you're only going to have physical damage, and that's really all there is to it. And I forgot to put points in. Yay, skill points! All right, so um, so we're going to use uh, Frenzy, which seems like a good thing to use with this particular weapon. All right, make sure we toggle our run on. And uh, this is Hell Difficulty. Well, players won, but uh, it is Hell Difficulty. And, uh, and here we are fighting in some terrible, terrible zones. Oh, God, I don't have any. Cannot be frozen. Look at me being terrible. But as you can see, the damage on these is actually really nice. If only I had Cannot Be Frozen. I thought I did have Cannot Be Frozen. I must have taken it off. My Grimond. My Jewel. <laughs> I got carried away. So, this particular weapon, as you can see, does fairly well in Hell Difficulty. And, um, and honestly, if you were to use it in difficulties that were not Hell Difficulty, like Nightmare, you pretty much would crush everything for the most part. Um, if you happen to have a Zod rune laying around to put in the, um, the ethereal version, it would actually be a fairly competent weapon for quite some time, with 282 on the top end and 159 on the bottom. Along with the deadly strike and the open wounds, it's actually a pretty amazing little weapon. But what else could you use this for, as opposed to just simply a raw weapon to attack things with? Well, the 50% uh, open wounds would actually make it a halfway decent weapon for uh, just, just keeping, like, ubers from regenerating. Maybe you don't have open wounds on your equipment, for some reason, and you're in there in the Ubers and you want to use this as a swap two for 50% open wounds. There are other choices that you could do for this, but it is relatively fast. And if you were a smiter, for instance, um, and you just wanted to apply some open wounds really quickly, it would be a really fast open wounds smiting weapon. I wouldn't really waste a burr rune in this, but um, 
I mean, I can totally see how it uh, it would definitely be a very strong weapon with negative 30%, 3% targets defense, 20% crushing blow, 50% deadly strike, and 50% chance of open wounds. It just has a lot of really nice effects on it. Um, kind of reminds me of the uh, Flesh Ripper Fanged Knife. Um, not really 100% sure it has a lot of uses outside of maybe like a Zeal Paladin. Um, perhaps even... I mean, I don't want to say specifically that it would be a good weapon for a shapeshifter druid, but if you didn't have anything else, it might not be a bad weapon. Um, just wheels are turning in my mind. The wheels are turning. The wheels keep on turning. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward weapon. It's fast. It does a relatively high amount of damage. It has a relatively high percentage of deadly strike, and if combined with other deadly strike items, you can actually actually reach the 100% uh, deadly strike cap um, relatively easily. Um, I imagine if you put on like Gore Riders and G Face, um, you would be at uh, a pretty high percentage. Um, gore Riders are uh, are what? I have Gore Riders sitting in here. I think they're 15%. Yeah, so 15%. So if you're running uh, Razor's Edge with uh, Gore Riders, you'd be looking at already uh, 65%. And then um, G-Face, which uh, which I do actually have on my... Barbarian? It's either on my Barbarian or on my uh, Vegomatic. She doesn't have a helmet on. Does he have a helmet on? He does. He doesn't have the right helmet on. <laughs> Let me check. Uh, it's probably just sitting in my stash, actually, now that I think about it. So we had, uh, if we have Gore Riders, which is 15, uh, Razor's Edge Tomahawk, which is 50, um, and then we were also running G-Face. I believe G-Face is, uh, I think it's, I want to say it's 15%. Uh, yes, 15%. So we're at 50, 65 80, so we're at 80%, and then if you threw in High Lords, which is 33%, that would be 80, 90, 100, 110, 113, so you'd actually be at 113 with High Lords Wrath, um, and of course High Lords Wrath is based on character level, so you could actually use this at a lower level, um, and then eventually I guess you could take off um, Gore Riders, uh, it would be a very interesting way to get a 100% chance of Deadly Strike. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and um, keep watching.